The T-Mobile Rebel 5G is $400 and you are getting a lot of bang for your buck at that price point. It launched on T-Mobile and Metro PCS in early September, alongside the Rebel 4 and Rebel 4 Plus. This phone is manufactured by TCL and it's almost a carbon copy of the TCL 10 5G phone. The Rebel 5G features a 6.53 inch Full HD Plus display. It's an IPS LCD screen and in my opinion it looks really, really good. Colors pop in this display, it gets pleasantly bright for outdoor use. And something I appreciate is that it also gets very dim for nighttime use while you lay in bed and look at Reddit for hours on end. Another thing that surprised and delighted me was the fact that this phone features an always-on display. Most phones without an OLED screen don't offer this feature. To enable it, go to Settings, Display, Advanced, Lock Screen Display, and click the Always On button around here. Now a quick warning though, most LCD phones don't feature Always On Display because it affects the battery life, and it's no different here. I see about 2% additional battery drain per hour while using it. Also on the front of this phone, there's a capable 16 megapixel hole punch camera. Now the phone features 128 gigs of built-in storage, plus it has a micro SD card slot for expansion up to one terabyte. And unfortunately, even though the back of this phone is glass, no wireless charging is included. Speaking of not included, no IP68 dust and water resistance, which isn't surprising here for the price point, but it would be nice to have. The fingerprint sensor on the phone is located on the back and it works very well. It's fast and reliable. There's also a face unlock, which will activate the lock screen when you press the power button. And it works well in nighttime and daytime use. But I personally prefer to use the fingerprint sensor. The back camera array is slightly elevated from the body, so it has a tiny camera bump. It has a 48 megapixel main shooter, plus an 8 megapixel super wide camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. These cameras, especially the 48 megapixel, do a good job in most situations, and at this price point are just what you'd expect. Not the best cameras, but perfectly adequate and perfectly usable, and they can get some nice results and good lighting. Lots of modes are available in the camera app. Auto mode features scene optimization to try and adjust camera settings based on what's in the frame. Portrait mode does a pretty good job in nicely lit situations. It can be hit or miss otherwise. Super night mode does a nice job brightening up a dark scene. I will include some camera samples later in the video. Pro mode has all the controls you need if you like to manually adjust camera settings, but it only works for pictures and not videos. Under the More tab, it also features slow motion up to 960 frames per second, stop motion, which will take a time-lapse video, light trace, which will do a long exposure. It provides you some options for what kind of scene you're trying to capture. Super macro mode is also found here to utilize the five megapixel camera if you're trying to take a picture of something close up. And there's also a high pixel mode, which will take full 48 megapixel pictures. And you can click the edit button here to drag the scenes that you use most onto the main toggle board. If you hold down the shutter button, it'll take burst shots. Also don't experience any shutter lag when taking pictures normally. Switching between the front and back camera is fast enough. It might lag just a little bit, but not very noticeable. Now the front camera of this phone records up to 1080p at 30 frames per second, and the rear camera will record up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Both cameras feature EIS rather than OIS, and video samples will be included at the end of this video. Now let's talk about specs, baby. The Rebel 5G has a Snapdragon 765 processor and 6 gigs of RAM, and honestly this phone flies in day-to-day -day performance. I've experienced zero issues with it, no app crashes, no random reboots, just good old fast Android with no compromises. Now I used Geekbench 5 to run some benchmarks, which you can use to compare to your current device, or you can compare it to other phones you're considering buying. The 765 processor is a very capable processor and gets some good results. Now the Rebel 5G has a huge 4,500 milliamp hour battery in it. The battery paired with the 765 Snapdragon processor makes for a fantastic combo for battery life. I can easily squeeze 36 hours of battery life out of this phone with close to five hours of screen on time. For me, that is a win, but everyone uses phones differently, so it could be better or it could be worse for you. Now this phone's running a pretty much stock Android 10 experience out of the box. Now since it is a T-Mobile phone, there are some T-Mobile apps that come loaded on the device, but nothing that I would consider bloatware. One thing I've never seen before is while this phone has Google feed on the left, it also features a T-Mobile feed. And there's no way to turn it off that I've found but thankfully you do have to actually click on it for it to show up. It isn't really bothersome to me, it's just something I want to let you know. You can enable gesture navigation and double press to launch the camera under settings, system, gestures. 
Besides that, the only non-stock option I found is this Next Vision option, which is TCL, who manufactures this phone's display enhancer. I prefer to leave the visual enhancement on, as well as SDR to HDR, which will make non-HDR content look HDR, or at least try to. You can also enable reading mode, which tries to mimic an ebook-like experience. And this phone also does feature NFC for Android Beam or Google Pay. Now, fair warning, I'm not sure how timely or consistent software updates will be on this phone. I've already received one system update since having this phone, so hopefully that's a good sign. But Rebel phones normally do not get consistent software updates or even updated past the version of Android they launch with, so time will tell. Going over the rest of this phone's design, I do want to point out one of my favorite features, and that's the notification LED power button. This is an excellent feature which I wish other manufacturers would include in their phones. It comes on when charging or when you get a notification, but it is only a white LED. Nonetheless, it still looks really good. The volume buttons are above the power button and they're plastic but easily reachable. Now the back features a really cool pink tint to it. It really looks good when light hits it just right and it gives the phone some character to match that pink power button. The IMEI number is also printed on the back of this phone, which is kind of interesting. Now the SIM card slot is on the left hand side and that's also where you can install up to a one terabyte micro SD card. A headphone jack on the top, that works pretty well in my opinion. And a USB-C port on the bottom that features quick charge. And this phone also does have a single speaker on the bottom and it uses the earpiece as another speaker. I find these speakers not very well balanced, but it is nice that there are two speakers on this phone. Overall, the speakers get plenty loud and you definitely won't miss notifications because of them. And speaking of notifications, the vibration motor in this phone is adequate. Now, this phone feels really nice in the hand. It's not too heavy, but it also still feels premium. Now, one-handed operation is kind of difficult unless you have big hands due to the big screen size of this phone. This phone is about as big as the Galaxy Note 20 and it's quite slippery due to being made of glass. Now, speaking of glass, the front screen is not made of grill glass, so it will be a little more prone to scratches. So I'd recommend getting a screen protector if you're worried about it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this phone flies in day-to-day -day use. Switching between apps, launching apps, they all just feel snappy as ever. Social media, media consumption, and gaming all work well in my opinion. I was able to play Call of Duty on high settings with no issues. Insta-snap, tick face all work well. And yes, I just made that word up to combine all social media apps. I personally don't use TikTok anymore, but I'm sure it'll work just fine. Web browsing feels quick, and this huge screen lets a lot of content in the window. If you have 5G service, then you will not be disappointed with the mobile internet experience. And overall, it's just a lovely experience all around. As I mentioned in my unboxing video, this phone includes a nice braided USB-C cable, a SIM ejector tool, and a quick charge power brick. No headphones are included, unfortunately. Hey everybody, it's your boy CE Tech Dude, and right now we are using the front-facing camera on the T-Mobile Rebel 5G recording at 1080p, 30 frames per second. Now one thing I'm experiencing right now I wasn't expecting, <laughs> these sunglasses are making the screen impossible to see. I guess it's polarized. I've never had this happen with a phone before. So just something to be cautious about, I guess. Um, I don't know, it's weird. It's like real dark. I can't even see what I'm doing right now. But this is a 1080p, 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second and it's using EIS for stabilization so let me know what you think let me know about the mic quality as well in the comments so now I'm using the rear camera recording at 4k 30 frames per second just handheld hopefully it's pretty stabilized and hopefully you can hear me okay I'm not sure how the built-in mic sounds yet so I'll be reviewing this footage with you I did mention that I couldn't see anything on the screen with wearing these sunglasses and that's only when the phone is in landscape mode it's, I don't know, it's really bizarre, but when it's being held in portrait mode, I can see everything just fine. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but just something I want to let you know. And hopefully you like this uh, video quality. I'll see you later. And now I'm recording on the wide camera, which only records at 1080p, 30 frames per second. So should be a lot more of me in the frame now. Hopefully it looks good as well. Back to the review. So is the T-Mobile Rebel 5G worth it? Most definitely. For $400, this phone packs a lot in it for the price. 5G, great display, great build quality, with a nice design and lots of features packed in. 
A good camera and just a fast and smooth experience all around makes this a good contender for your money. I would even recommend this phone at the full $400 price point. So if you can get a good deal on it when signing up with T-Mobile, that would be even sweeter. Overall, this phone is a win in my book. Sincerely hope this video was useful to you. If it was, why don't you go ahead and give it a like and just try smashing that subscribe button too. I appreciate you. God bless and take care. See ya.